Hello and welcome. In today's uh, session, we will talk about uh, a mode switch interface usage in Autozar. We will see what a mode switch interface is and how we can create one in order to communicate between two uh, modules. We have here um, in front of us um, a diagram, a block diagram, what it represents is uh, the applicative layers with the focus on two application software components, which communicates in between them through RTE. We already addressed the topic of sender-receiver communication and the client-server communication. Basically, as a short um, recap, is that um, sender receiver is suitable for um, data communication value structures um, that uh, needs to be uh, sent from one module to uh, another. Um, basically, is uh, suitable for uh, data transmission from CAN or from other sources. Uh, then we have uh, client server, which is uh, practically um, a function call, a set of operations which are provided by a, a server and invoked by a user. But what is mode switch interface? Mode switch interface, uh, like we have here. Uh, the mode switch interface is used to notify a software component in the application of a mode. So we have a predefined set of modes and we inform uh, a software component that a mode has changed. The mode manager, communication manager or BSW manager provides modes that can be used by mode user to adjust the behavior according to the mode or synchronize activities to mode switches. Basically, in our example here, I have as follows. I have a TLT module and an SPD module. We are not interested now exactly what they are doing. We talk conceptually and we have as follows. Let's say that we have a short state machine here in the TLT with a specific behavior. And we have a list of modes, start, wait, and stop. And basically we want to communicate these modes to the SPD module in order to react on a mode change or do something there. This is what we are doing uh, now. So we have um, two possibilities. One, we defined a callback when a mode has changed. We can define a callback for each mode. In our case, we said that we have a callback for start, wait, and stop. So each time a mode is entered, we will have a notification callback. We can also do the following because we know that each component has a cyclic function. We can just pull the current mode and create the logic based on the current mode that we read from the TLT. Yes, of course, both of these strategies have different implication, different timings implication, because this callback are um, triggered in the context of the TLT, and this one is uh, triggered in the um, um, scheduler context of the SPD. So we will now jump and create um, uh, these uh, ports and the interface and we will declare the modes and see how we can do this uh, in um, RxML. Now we jump uh, to configure the RxMLs for this one. So we have the SPD module here. 
and the TLD. The SPD um, was uh, constructed in the previous video. We have a communication between these two components, a client server and the sender receiver. Basically, we have two ports here uh, it's, and um, a software internal behavior with uh, the main runnable. And um, also the, for, the, for the TLT, we have um, quite the same. Please check uh, the previous videos for more information about the elements here. So we now jump uh, and um, create the modes uh, as we discussed um, in the block diagram. We need these modes to be defined. Yes. So these modes uh, we are part of the, um, the TLT module. Yes. So we go in the TLT and create uh, another uh, package and we will call this uh, mod uh, we will rename this as uh, uh, mod uh, group declarations yeah Inside this mode, we will add an element called a mode declaration group. So a new child and we choose the element um, mode declaration group. It will take just a second to reach there. So a mode declaration group and uh, below this we will add the first mode which is a mode from mode declarations, mode declaration we choose and this one is called start and we assign the value um, 1. Then we add another one, which is mode declaration mode weight with the value 2 and another one with the name of stop and the value three so simple we now have the modes that uh, are defined by the tlt now that we have the modes uh, created we will uh, jump to create the interfaces um, but uh, before that uh, let's rename this to um dlt modes good now we will create um, another package and inside this package we will add the another element and mode switch uh, interface mode switch interface here good for this mode switch interface we will add a mode declaration group mode declaration group prototype and um, we will um, configure this one 
to point to, to the mode that we already created. We will map this mode to this interface. So here we will set a name TLT mode and we will choose here on the type our um, mode then we can also maybe um, rename the mode switch interface and give this a name interface mode switch good next we need to create the ports we need a provide port for the tlt and a require port for spd for this we uh, create the p port in the tlt we add a p port prototype here and uh, with a new child provided com spec mode switch sender com spec on the p port we rename this to um, TLT P port mode switch or maybe P port TLT mode switch and uh, we map the interface which we already created the mode switch interface and here we see that we have the port and the provide interface for the mode switch uh, sender com spec we will um, add the mode group which we created start wait and stop maybe we set the queue length to two and enhanced uh, api to false these are some advanced properties for this uh, in order to generate the prototype a little dif difference. Uh, so you can have um, um, to return the, for more complex um, uh, implementations of uh, these um, modes. You can have um, the current mode, the previous mode and the next mode uh, if uh, it's implemented um, in this way but it's for um, false for us good uh, then um, we need to create uh, in spd we need to create a port an require port with uh, require com spec mode switch receiver uh, com spec again we um, our port SPD mode switch. It's just as an example. Okay, then also on the interface we map the same interface because the communication ports needs to be. Um, 
uh, needs to be compatible so it's mandatory to communicate on the same interface and for um, mod group here for the mod switcher switch receiver com spec we will uh, map again the modes in has mode api is false and that's it is sufficient now uh, we created the ports but how they communicate uh, in between so for this um, on the let's say the provide side uh, it's sufficient to have this one but uh, on the SPD side we need to create the events we said earlier that um, we want to uh, communicate in two, two ways we either want to have a callback for each mode or we want to get the current mode uh, cyclically or we can get the current mode inside this uh, callback either way we need to configure this yeah. so for this one in spd uh, besides uh, this uh, timing event we need to add uh, another um, event yes so it's uh, switch um, mode switch event and for uh, we need a switch event for each um, mode so we need to add three of them yeah so new events and mode switch events mode switch event for each of them we need to map runnable so we need to define a runnable that will be triggered when this mode is changed so um, we need to create the runnables we only have the spd uh, runnable uh, the main runnable here so we add a new runnable and we will call it um, spd start um callback yeah then we duplicate um, this and create another runnable with um wait SPD wait callback and the third mode which is um, SPD stop callback good now that we have all of them, we need to map uh, this event uh, to this runnable. But we need also to connect this event to the port. So here on start on event, first we need to map the start callback what do you want other one we need to map wait 
and for the third one we map stop good in order to make the connection between um, these runnables and uh, the port via these uh, events we need to add a new element on the mod switch events we need to reference the port for each event apart so here we add um, the context port and the context port is um, our mod switch port the context mode declaration group is our mode declaration group TLT mode and the mode declaration group uh, target so our target is the um, SPD start callback that we want to um, trigger when this mode is um, activated so we do the same <clears throat> for the next one so we add the modes and the, for the mode we map the port we have the same port we have the same mode declaration group but we have different mode so for the second one we went um, we configured the wait mode and then for the last one we add again the mode the context port again it's the same port the required port the mode declaration group it's the same but uh, when we this mode is activated on entry let's say of a certain state from the state machine uh, we will um, stop uh, and when this mode is triggered the stop callback is also uh, called good so far we covered um, this um, part when uh, the state machine indicates some certain modes a specific callback is triggered now if we want to just pull for the modes inside our component we go on the main runnable and add a new element called uh, mode uh, access point mode access points mode access point and here we uh, reference the um, for the context port we reference the mode switch required port yes and for the um, uh, target mode group we have uh, this uh, TLT mode here we do not specify a specific mode since uh, here we pull the current mode and we based on the return mode we can actually move forward good so far we um, we almost finished we covered the creation of the mode declaration uh, group here then we also created uh, the interface as a third step we created the ports and mapped the correct interface and the mode uh, declaration group that we created then we defined also the um, mode switch events for each mode apart then we also created the callback and mapped uh, for each callback we map it on the event 
we also made the connection between um, the mod switch event and the require port. And finally, we um, created another method to access these modes from the SPD uh, software component. Now, as a last step, in order this to work, we need to create um, the connection. So the connection here, we need to create the assembly software connector between these new ports. So we add uh, here a new connector, assembly software connector. And for this one, we specify a provider and we specify a requester. For the provider, we map the context component. It's the TLT and the target P port. It's the P port TLT mode switch. And uh, for the requester, the context component, it's uh, SPD and the target uh, R port is the R port SPD mode switch. This is important as a final step because um, both this com components are under the top level composition um, called composition. Uh, with these instances here, we do not need delegates. Maybe we will talk uh, in the future about what delegate means, uh, but uh, it's a simple connection. It's mandatory in order this to uh, work. I believe this is sufficient uh, to cover this uh, mode switch communication. And if you have any questions, uh, please address it. But always um, keep in mind uh, that uh, we do not need to complicate it. And uh, just to keep it simple and uh, to be understandable and to be um, error proof. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye bye.